This week, we're looking at what is generally, but not always, an anti-consumerist practice that can be broadly described as taking the norm. Taking the oh. <laughs> cut. Long before celebrities were buying his works, and there would be oh, fuck. Yeah, I got it right. I got it right. <laughs> Anyways, I'd ask if this week's topic can truly be art. But then I'd get the line right and still think I fucked up. Cut. Who describe themselves as a network as a as a net Hey, I don't remember us doing the Whoa, that's salacious. I this isn't an episode we did either, and um frankly, yeah, why isn't Joe narrating? Why am I having a discussion with credits that I must have put in there because I edit the show and I do any of you guys know what's going on? So when all said and done, did this week's topic succeed in any of the three categories where we placed it? Art is a moot point for reasons we've already covered. Activism? Not very, although I'd certainly be interested to see any examples you could provide to argue the point. Uh, feel free to email them to me or send them in the comments. When it comes to an arc of good times, total success. Sure, there's a risk of a clown and a businessman coming to blows, but even if that happens, I don't think anybody afterwards would argue that a ludicrous good time had been had. British street artist Banksy is easily the most well-known for taking the artistic angle. Before major celebrities were buying his works and London boroughs were actually protecting his stencils, Banksy gained notoriety by sneaking a lot of his work into various major galleries like the Tate London where they would often be put on the walls and left there for several hours before anyone noticed something was amiss. While this sort of thing did bleed over into the activism category by making people think about how an object is recontextualized simply by being put inside a major gallery, the question of whether or not it succeeded as art is, um... <sighs> Oh god, um, you see, uh, uh... I'd try to answer or at least ask if this week's topic could truly be considered art, but then I'd run the risk of getting into a... diatribe. Something which has only become more risky since the World Health Organization medically and scientifically proved a variety of horrible symptoms being connected to simply saying the question out loud. When it comes to activism, I find myself drawn to a subcategory known as subtervising, in which you subvert an advertisement by creating false commercials that look just like the originals, in order to lull someone into a false sense of security, and then, bam, they try to make you think. Those bastards. While I certainly admire their goals and the clever attempt to get under people's skepticism radar, I can't help but be reminded of the reworked ads from Ad Magazine. Probably because, regardless of the creator's aims, subvertising rarely seems to have any lasting effect past entertainment. And perhaps a solemn head nod while thinking, yes, meat really is murder. Where this week's topic really succeeds is in the Anarchic Good Times department. Just go down to the States and hang out with the Cacophony Society to get all the great examples you need. The Society describes itself as a randomly gathered network of free spirits who reunite it in the pursuit of experiences beyond the pale of mainstream society. That may sound like a pretty grandiose way of saying that they like to deploy weapons-grade wackiness upon the public, but I'd say it's pretty apt. Three examples which leapt out at me were The Naughty Santa Rampage Basically a pub crawl with dozens or even hundreds of Santas engaging in activities which just might not fit in with the traditional picture of Santa Cement Cuddlers An event where they filled a dozen teddy bears with cement and put them on toy store shelves complete with barcoded labels And possibly my favorite Clowns Against Commerce which Quote Tested the limits to which a clown could abuse businessmen in downtown Los Angeles before being assaulted or arrested. It should come as very little surprise that the Cacophony Society inspired many of the less dangerous pranks and attitudes found within Chuck Palahniuk's breakout novel, Fight Club. Both groups have an appeal which has a way of obscuring the fallacies and problems found within their philosophies. Like the gaggle of Fight Club fans who started their own fight clubs which generally lasted as long as it took for someone to be reminded that getting hit hurts, I have to wonder how many times Cacophony Society activities have gone awry and not been reported. Though I reckon we'd have heard something about it if a cement cuddler had fallen and given someone the ultimate cuddle. This week we're looking at what is generally, but not always, an anti-consumerist practice that can be broadly described as taking the norm and subverting it, sometimes in a subtle fashion, other times much more noticeably. A shifting slippery beast, our topic can be an exercise in art, activism, anarchic good times, or some combination of all three. In the following review, I hope that we'll be able to sort through all this to reach reasonable conclusion on culture jamming. 
Well, guys, I hope you appreciated our experimental episode. As I'm sure you know, we would only ever do something like this for a variety of complex and deep and multi-layered meaningful reasons. Probably. That's probably the only reason we'd do it.